MIDI flow limiter allows you to do two different things that are not necessarily related. The first thing you can do with it is to use it as a velocity curve. If you're using an external keyboard, you sometimes have the problem that notes are really loud, although you're still playing quite softly, or that it's too hard to get to the loud notes. With a velocity curve, you can specify which output velocities should be sent for an input velocity. I'm going to demonstrate this with an external keyboard that I've attached to the iPad. And first, I'll select it as a source in a MIDI pipeline in AudioBus. As a sound app, I'll use CMP Piano. So when I play the keyboard, you can hear the piano sound. Now I'll add the limiter as an effect. First I want to use it to make the sound a little bit softer. For that I'm going to modify the curve so that louder notes are remapped to quieter notes. The curve shows the input velocities on the x-axis and the output velocities on the y-axis. And because of that, a curve like this makes louder notes, which are further on the right, to quieter notes, which are further below. When I play, you can hear the difference. I can make it a bit more extreme. The curve does not have to use the full output range. I can make the notes not reach the maximum possible value at all. Or I can make all notes have at least this velocity here on the left. You can also invert velocities like this. You can also set a fixed value, which is just a straight line. Then all notes will have the same velocity and the original velocity is completely removed. The second thing you can do with MIDI Flow Limiter is to create velocity layers. It's a bit like um, splitting the keyboard, but not depending on which note you play, but how loud or how forceful you, you play the key. And a good example for that is a piano sound combined with a string sound that sets in with louder notes. In AudioBus, I'll add the keyboard to a second pipeline and use isomphonic as sound. I'll delete the limiter for the piano and add a new one for the strings. Because what I want to do is to prevent notes from going to isomphonic that are too quiet. When I play the keyboard, I can see the incoming velocities in the input range selector at the top. This makes it easy to select the right range, so I think this is a good velocity value where the string sound should start. So I'll move the slider so that it starts here and filters out the quieter notes. So when I play quieter, there's no string sound, and when I play louder, it sets in. curve to make the velocity slower at the point where the string sound starts. So this is called a velocity layer and it can be really useful when you're performing live with multiple sounds. You could also add the limiter to the piano sound again and make it filter out above a certain velocity. Then, loud notes would only trigger the strings without the piano. It really depends on the effect you want to have. So much for that. Now, if you are as excited as I am about the new AudioBus 3 and MIDI, don't forget to subscribe to this channel on YouTube and follow MIDIFLOW on twitter.com slash MIDIFLOW or facebook.com slash MIDIFLOW app. There is even more stuff coming. See you next time.